Hey racers and welcome back to another live stream. Uh, today's live stream is a little bit different um, of a topic, uh, mainly because I know there's a few states or a couple of states, different areas um, that are going into lockdown. And I know uh, there's a few of you that watch me from around the world and we're in and out of lockdowns at the moment. So that's just part of life and it's probably going to continue to be part of life. So the purpose of today's video is to show you how you can get race fit, even if you're in lockdown, even if you don't have access. Hey, Simon, even if you don't have access to your normal gym equipment, okay, or your normal gym training or gym sessions, or maybe you've got a PT that you work with that you're not able to see anymore as well. So the first thing that we need to focus on, so when we look at the actual training, there's two things we, we need to work on, okay? And as I always talk about, number one, we need to focus on getting strong, okay? The stronger you can get yourself, the lighter we can get the bike to feel. And the lighter we can get the bike to feel, the less fatigue, less energy you're going to use when you're out riding the bike. Now, if you don't have access to a gym or you don't have access to your normal weight training gear, not everyone has a, a good setup at home, then that's going to be quite challenging because the best way to get stronger is by lifting weights. That's how you get stronger. So how do you do that if you don't have any weights or you, you have limited equipment? Now, this is definitely a step back from weight training, okay, when we're using body weight training. Okay, so if we don't have any equipment at all, you've got zero, okay, absolutely nothing at home, no dumbbells, no kettlebells, no barbells, no weights, absolutely nothing, um, all you've got is just your body, then that's what we have to work with. We have to work with your body weight. Now, the big difference between trying to get stronger using your body weight and trying to get stronger using weight training is that when we're using your body weight, we have to use a lot more volume to make up for not having enough weights, okay? So if we're doing, let's say, squats, you can put 50 kilos on a bar and we can challenge your body by doing five sets of five with 50 kilos for some squats. When you're training at home and you're doing body weight squats, you're not going to get away with doing five sets of five body weight squats and expect to get stronger unless you're majorly overweight, have an office job, can't even get yourself on the bike. In that case, you're probably not even watching this video. So when you go and do body weight training during the week and you're trying to get stronger, there's two techniques we can use. There's number one, volume. Okay, so instead of doing five by five squats, you might do sets of 50 squats, sets of 100 squats. Okay, that's the first thing. Number one we can use to get stronger is rely on volume. We have to do a lot more work, a lot more reps than what you do when, when you have weight. Second thing that we can do is we can use what's called a tempo. Um, and you can use tempo with strength training um, as well to get better results, but we're going to use it for body weight training here. So what tempo is, is we can control the rate at which we move or the speed at which we move for different movements to increase what's called our time under tension. Okay, so I'll give you an example of that. So let's say I'm doing a, um, let's say I'm doing a push up. Okay, and obviously I'm sitting upright for you guys so you can see and I can give you a good example. So we've got our, our push up motion, chest going down to the floor and then we're pushing back up. Now when I'm doing a normal push up, when my chest goes down to the floor, I'm actually not using any effort at all because gravity's pulling me down, okay? So I weigh, I'm weigh i weighing about 100 kilos at the moment. When I go down to the floor, I'm not even lifting 100 kilos, okay? Gravity's pulling me down, it's weightless. When I'm coming up, I'm pushing 100 kilos or part thereof 100 kilos, but on the way down, I'm not. So what that means is when I'm doing a push-up, I'm only getting 50% of the benefit because on the way down, I'm using nothing, and then I'm putting all the effort in on the way up. The way tempo training helps to get you stronger, is instead of using gravity to help to pull you down, we're actually going to resist against gravity and fight against it. So let's say we're working with, for example, a three second tempo. What that would mean is we start at the top of the push up, and I'm going to control myself and lower myself down very slowly. One, two, three, up. One, two, three, up. One, two, three, up. And what you're gonna find is that's gonna be a shit ton harder. And the reason it's gonna be so hard is because your time under tension is increasing. Instead of just being under tension when we're, we're going up at the push-up, we're now under tension on the way down from the push-up as well. So it's gonna allow you to get a lot stronger with the movements. You can apply that to squats as well. So for a squat, instead of just dropping down to the bottom of the squat and then coming back up, lower yourself down in the squat. Take three seconds. One, two, three, bang. One, two, three, bang. You can do the same with lunges. You can do the same with any movement, okay? Applying tempo. Really what we're doing is we're taking gravity out. Anytime gravity will help to pull your weight down, instead of your muscles actually having to do some work, we apply tempo. Um, so what I'm doing for some of our riders at the moment 
um, who don't have access to equipment who are in lockdown is we're starting off with, say, for some of them, maybe no tempo at the start. And then as we're going to next week, then we're going to, okay, to three second tempo. And then the next week, then we're going to a five second tempo. Okay, so we're constantly increasing the time under tension because we don't have external load. We can't put more weight on the bar every week. So we have to increase our time under tension, which is what's going to make it harder um, and allow you to get a shit ton stronger as well. So that's the uh, first thing when it comes to, to body weight training. The second thing that we need to work on, that's, that's the strength side. The second thing we need to work on is the conditioning. So same as when you go and ride and race, right? There's short, sharp bursts of high intensity activity. Okay, so let's take a motocross track. You've got some parts of the track which are really rough, really physically demanding. And then you've got other parts of the track which are a bit of a breeze, right? So you might have like a main straight. You can sit down and have a rest and have a break for a bit. Doesn't take much effort. Then you've got like a whole big whoop section which takes a lot of uh, physical effort. Um, and causes a lot of fatigue, okay? It puts your body under a lot of stress, it zaps a lot of energy. So what we wanna do when we're training is we wanna make sure that we're using high intensity training, okay? Specifically when we're using body weight training. So the more we can, what intensity is at the end of the day, is we wanna get a high amount of work into a short period of time, okay? So if I say, hey, I need you to do 100 squats. If I give you 24 hours to do 100 squats, it's going to be pretty easy for most of you. You're probably not going to get, like, unless you do no training, you're probably not going to get too much benefit from doing 100 squats over 24 hours. But if I say, hey, I need you to get those 100 squats done in 10 minutes. You go, okay, shit, that's a bit harder because I'm not getting as much rest. I've got to push a little bit harder. If I say you need to get 100 squats done in five minutes, you're like, all right, now I've got to work a bit. Now I've got to push. My legs are starting to burn. I've got to keep going. If I say, hey, I need you to get 100 squats done in two minutes, then you're like, shit, like I need to get moving. Okay, because you're doing 50 squats a minute. Uh, if I say I need you to get those 100 squats done in 90 seconds, then you've really got your work cut out for you. Okay, or even down to a minute. Like you're really moving really fast. So is it harder to get 100 squats done in 24 hours or harder to get them done in 90 seconds? Definitely harder to get them done in 90 seconds because you're doing a lot more work in a shorter period of time. So same when we're doing body weight training, we're trying to work on conditioning. We want to ramp up intensity. So what that means is we want to do a lot of work in a short period of time. So there's a few different ways that you can um, do that. You can use, so we can use what's called couplets or triplets. So you could do, so if you're training at home, you could do say five rounds, you could do a minute of squats, a minute of push-ups, a minute rest, and do that for six rounds. Okay, that'll take you six, 12, uh, or sorry, six, 12, that'll take you 18 minutes to be able to do that, okay? Um, and so the whole goal is you record the reps for the first couple of minutes, the first couple of intervals, and you want to work on maintaining that all the way through. Um, biggest mistake I see people when they're in lockdown and they're trying to train using body weight training, especially when they're trying to do high intensity stuff like this, is they try and maintain their reps all the way through. If you're actually training at a high intensity, you shouldn't be able to maintain your reps all the way through because it's physically impossible because you've zapped all your energy and you're fatigued from the previous sets. So if, you're do, if you did 20 squats in the first minute, you shouldn't be able to maintain it. The goal is not to hold 20 squats across all six rounds. If 20 is actually an all-out effort, it might go 20. Then you might do 19 in the next one. Then it might go 17. And then it might do 16. And then maybe you drop to 14. Okay, the reps should be dropping down because you're really pushing hard at the start. A way I can tell if you're pacing the workout is if you have all the reps the same all the way through, I know you weren't really going hard. Okay, maybe the last round was a little bit hard, but you weren't actually going, you weren't operating at high intensity. You're operating at pacing speed all the way through. Common mistakes that I see, guys, when people are training in lockdown, um, I've got a few written down here. Number one is they're not consistent. Okay, they lose their reason why. So if you're working towards a race or a ride or improving, you know, being on the bike, and that thing gets taken away from you, you lose your goal. Okay, the thing you're working towards, the reason you go to the gym, the reason you eat well, the reason you put in all this effort to training has disappeared. So when you mentally, when you're thinking about training, like, well, what's the point in going to training if I can't go and ride? Okay, what's the point in eating well if I can't go and ride anyway? Well, that's the whole point of doing all this stuff. So there's two things you need to remember. Number one thing that you need to remember here is that when you're in a period of lockdown, it's about preserving and damage control. Okay, so if you're used to doing weight training and doing the stuff I normally talk about, and then you get stuck in lockdown body weight, what's going to happen is even if you're doing body weight training, your strength and your conditioning is going to drop backwards. Okay, it's going to drop off. 
um, to a certain degree. What we want to do is we want to control the amount of damage that happens. So for someone who doesn't train over, say, a three-week period for New South Wales guys, for someone who doesn't train, their performance goes like this over three weeks. It disappears, right? What we want to do is we want it dropping off just like this, okay? Very mild drop-off. So when we get to the end of a lockdown or when things go back to normal, you can get back into your normal routine. It might take you a week to get back into it, and then you're ready to rock and roll, ready to go. If you take three weeks off completely, it's almost like you've got to take another three weeks just to get back to where you were before. You've lost six weeks, a month and a half, okay, of making no progress just because you decided to do nothing for a three-week period. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing that I find um, is more of a, the mindset side of things is everyone's in the same boat, okay? No one likes lockdowns. No one likes being stuck at home. Everyone wants to go and do their normal training, go and ride the bike. That's great. If you feel like shit and you're not motivated and not driven, that's how everyone else is feeling, okay? Everyone's in the same boat. Everyone's feeling the same way, the same emotion. You might feel depressed. You might feel anxious. You might be like, what's the, the point in doing all this shit? Everyone feels the same way, okay? No one enjoys it. No one's, no one's happy that we're in lockdown and that you can't do the shit that you want to do. So knowing that, if you're a competitor and you want to be competitive with your racing, this is the biggest advantage that you have, right? So for me, I had a, if I use a personal example, um, a few months back when we were in lockdown here in WA, um, I had a weightlifting competition that I'd entered that I'd been working towards for, I don't know, three, four, five months, whenever it was, I put my entry in for it. And so I've been working hard, training, okay, doing well, eating right, like, you know, doing the extra, going the extra mile for my training to make sure I was ready to rock and roll for this comp. We got two weeks before the comp and we went into lockdown. So I'm like, shit, all right, well, is this going to happen? I can't go and do my normal training at the gym. I don't have access to the right equipment. I've got some stuff at home, um, but uh, the garage I have is not, I live in a townhouse and the garage I have is only slightly taller than me. So I can't go overhead with anything, okay? Or it's very hard to, to go overhead without belting the shit out of the roof. So I can't do any overhead stuff. And also in the townhouse, so I can't drop weights on the floor because it will fucking go through every single building on the street. We'll have plenty of complaints. So there's only certain things that I can do at home and I couldn't go to the gym and do my normal training with my coach to be able to get ready. So initial thoughts is like, shit, like I've done all this work, put all this time in, put all this effort in to go and do this weightlifting comp and now it's not even going to happen and I can't even do my proper training even if it does go ahead in a couple of weeks' time. So I was like, okay, well, how do I get myself to, to move and to commit? The thing that I thought about is every other person at the weightlifting comp is in the same boat, right? They all can't do proper training. They can't go and see their coaches and go to the gym and all that. So what I decided for myself is I was, I was going to double down in these next couple of weeks because I knew that everyone else was going to have two weeks of improper training or give up or feel like shit or not be motivated and not go and do the work. So I was like, okay, well, this is probably the biggest advantage I have to do well at this comp. Not necessarily because I'm going to be better than everyone else, but because everyone else is going to have two weeks off and I'm going to overcome all this bullshit that's up here to be able to keep cracking and keep putting in the work so I can go and do this weightlifting comp. Anyway, the weightlifting comp ended up getting cancelled, but I put in two weeks of solid training. I just kept hitting it hard. And then when the gyms reopened, I just picked up from where I left off and kept going. So it's the same for you guys. Um, if you're, you're dealing with a loss of motivation going into riding and racing, okay, and you're competing, this is the biggest advantage you have because everyone else is feeling the same way. Everyone else is taking the days off training. This is your opportunity to double down and get at it. Um, I've pretty much covered all the, the three common mistakes just in one area there. Um, so really that's it. The strength and conditioning, you can tackle that guys. Okay, that's easy enough for you to be able to get at. It's just more the mental games. You just gotta, you gotta get at it. You gotta commit. There's nothing I can really say or do. It's just, you gotta get in there. You don't feel like doing it. You don't wanna do it. You just gotta go and do it anyway. Um, so I am looking for three new riders to work with over the next 16 weeks who would like to be able to put in a full moto at race speed, regardless of whether they are in lockdown or not. Okay. They're ready to smash the next 16 weeks, regardless of being in lockdown, not being able to go to the gym, not having the right stuff. You're determined to get a full race at race fitness, regardless of what the government does. Um, I need you to commit to three training sessions per week and, um, if you can go for a ride and you're not in lockdown, you only need to be riding once a week. Um, otherwise, if that, obviously, if you're in lockdown, we need to hustle and do the right things during the week. Um, so if that's something that you would like to uh, apply for, I'll put a uh, coaching link or coaching application form uh, in the comments for you guys. 
It'll ask you a few questions about what you're working towards with your uh, riding and racing. Biggest challenges fitness-wise out on the bike so that we can address those even if you're in lockdown. Um, so to make sure when everything goes back to normal, you're going to be ready to get at it. Not one of those guys going, shit, I wish I did something. Um, so application form is down below in the comments. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video um, and I will chat to you soon. See ya.